tell them guys today's topic can you make it on your own so another video about that uh, before we jump into this uh, amazing topic I uh, just want to welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru His Divine Holiness Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashivam today actually I have Shastra Pramana actually sometime back I think two years back I, I quickly read the Shiva Samhita which is one of the sacred scriptures of Hinduism and I had noticed that in the Shiva Samhita, uh, they mentioned uh, in cer certain verses, we're talking about Guru. And I thought it was very interesting. And then recently, you know, this whole thing is very uh, popular and there's a lot of, um, I don't know, there's some talk currents that say that Guru is not necessary and that you should avoid Guru and all that. But, um, and that, yeah, anyways, it goes far. But um, in this video, I want to show how the Hindu tradition is a guru-disciple relationship and this Sanatana Hindu Dharma, Hinduism, is founded on guru and it is not something created out of nowhere. All the scriptures refer to guru in some way or another and they show the importance of guru and today I have a bunch of verses from the Shiva Samhita where they show the importance and how guru is mandatory to have um, success in the path of realizing your super consciousness. So uh, I'm going to jump into the verses and then I'm going to share a few things. Um, yes, so Shiva Samhita, we're starting in the third chapter. Now I will tell you how easily to attain success in yoga by knowing which the yogis never fail in the practice of yoga. So Shiva is introducing, like what I'm going to share with you guys, is responsible for the possibility of non-failure to be successful. Verse 11. Only the knowledge imparted by a guru through his lips is powerful and useful. Otherwise, it becomes fruitless, weak and very painful. So one thing I really like when, when Shiva reveals in the scriptures is pretty straightforward, right? It's going to be painful, that's all. If you take a spiritual truth without having been initiated, means without the feeling connection to a guru, you will not understand what the truth means. So um, I shared about it in the video yesterday, how important it is to surrender and to tackle the fear um, that is a fundamental uh, component of the mind. And uh, so basically, unless you start to tackle this fear, the capacity to grasp is not awakened. In you, your brain, your mind will not be able to understand. It will twist what it wants, the way it wants to justify what it wants to justify. So another verse, verse 12. So that's in the third chapter. Um, he who devoted to any knowledge while pleasing his guru with every attention readily obtains the fruit of that knowledge. So here, if you want to manifest the knowledge, if you want the knowledge to become cognition in you, you have to please serve the Guru in every attention. Means the remembrance of Guru should be in you in everything that you do. Thirteenth, there is not the least doubt that Guru is father, Guru is mother and Guru is God. And as such, he should be served by all with their thought, word and deed. So here again, very straightforward, emphasizing on how important it is to connect to the Guru and serve the Guru. Verse 14. By Guru's favor, everything good relating to one's self is obtained. So the Guru ought to be daily served, else there can be nothing auspicious. So I really like these verses. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. If you don't serve Guru, you can't expect you, nothing will be auspicious for you. I mean, if you have doubt, uh, I don't know what to say. Fifteenth, let him salute his guru after walking three times around him and touching with his right hand his lotus feet. So here Shiva is starting to reveal the procedure of how to start a practice. And he says, that before you start, circle around the guru and to touch his feet with your right hand. Okay, some more. We have some more, guys. Uh, verse seventeenth. That's pretty intense, so listen carefully. Those who are addicted to sensual pleasures or keep bad company, who are disbelievers 
and who are devoid of respect towards their guru, who resort to promiscuous assemblies, who are addicted to false and vain controversies, who are cruel in their speech, and who do not give satisfaction to their guru, never attain success. So then again, very straightforward, <laughs> as expected from Paramashiva. Um, and that I think is a very powerful verse to understand. When you start to abuse a guru, or if you start to entertain uh, lower frequencies of life, uh, the possibility of success is not uh, available to you while you remain in that space. Of course, if you shift your space, then everything changes. But uh, these spaces should be avoided at all costs if we want any form of success in achieving that bliss, um, that fulfillment and uh, uh, enlightenment and the uh, oneness with the Guru and with Paramashiva. Verse 18. The first condition of success is the firm belief that Vidya means knowledge, must succeed and be fruitful. So here actually this verse, Shiva reveals the seven dimensions important in order to experience success. So the first one is you need to believe that, that this truth will bring fruits. Second, the second condition is having faith in it. The third is respect towards the Guru. The fourth is the spirit of universal equality. I would say oneness. The fifth is the restraint of the organs of senses, so not get too engaged with the five senses or not get deluded by what the five senses experience. Then again, remembering your constant. When you engage through the senses, you need to engage through the remembrance of your constant, which is Paramashiva, which is uh, where Guru is constantly established into. Guru operates from the constant of Paramashivoham. Sixth is moderate eating. And he says, these are all. There is no seventh condition. So the seventh condition is that there is no seventh condition. So there's only six. Okay, and it's very clear, nothing else. So here again in the third condition, importance of respecting towards the Guru, feeling connection towards the Guru. Nineteen, having received instruction in yoga and obtained a Guru who knows yoga, let him practice with earnestness and faith according to the method taught by the Guru, by the teacher, the Acharya. So here Shiva guides the yogi into the action. So he's very clear, everything starts with the Guru. So that's for the third chapter. I have few verse, few verses of the fourth chapter as well. Uh, unfortunately, the Sanskrit script is there, but my I'm not fluent in reading the Sanskrit script yet. So here it says, Mantras that are actually this is the ninth, tenth, and eleventh verse of the fourth chapter of the Shiva Samhita. Mantras that are incomplete, pierced, paralyzed, burnt out, blunt, dirty, reviled, broken, mistaken, cursed, unconscious, slow, young, old, audacious proud of their youth, on the side of the enemy, impotent, weak, weakened, or fragmented into hundreds of pieces, soon become powerful in conjunction with this practice, when given by a guru. The, they all bestow perfection and liberation. So when it is bestowed by the guru, it reaches the fulfillment. So that's what I wanted to share with you all in this. That's the main part. Even if the whole thing is messed up, once it is given by Guru, it reaches uh, the shore that it needs to reach. Next verse, verse 21st. It says, When the sleeping Kundalini awakens through the grace of the Guru, all the lotuses and knots, knots are pierced. So here um, I can relate to Guru's initiation. When the grace of the Guru awakens the Kundalini, all the lotuses means each of these chakras are lotuses and ultimately the Sahasrara is the thousand petaled lotus blossoms and opens up fully. The knots refers to, as Sonji talked about it a few times, the, the Grandis, 
the Vishnu Grandi, Brahma Gandhi, Brahma Grandi, Shiva Grandi. So these different knots in us that needs to break for that full Kundalini to flow and to reach the Sahasrara and so that the enlightenment is experienced and sustained in the body. Verse 26. Following one's Guru's instruction, carefully press the Yoni in the space between the anus and the genital with the left heel. So here he's giving instructions to do certain postures, certain asanas. And, but here again, it starts with following one's Guru's instruction. So then again, emphasizing on the importance of remaining aligned and connected to the Guru. Verse 30th. After receiving this glorious mudra from his Guru's mouth, even an ill stared yogi can achieve success with this technique. So the technique alone is not enough. Technique has to be given by Guru because Guru is the context. Like I said, the Guru, like Swamiji shared in one of the satsang and I said in yesterday's uh, video, Guru is established in the constant of the universe, Paramashivoham. If you forget Guru, you forget the context of Paramashivoham. And whatever you do after that will not lead. If you have no context, the, 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 the action itself does not give the fruit. The action gives the fruit of the context from which we decided to engage into the action. So Guru is the context for liberation, for uh, experiencing super consciousness, Paramashivam, and so on. And then the last here I have, um, beginning of the 58th verse, it says the wise yogi who knows the Kichari Mudra from the instruction of his Guru reaches the ultimate destination. So then again, importance on the Guru. So these are the verse I, I took from the Shiva Samhita. Just wanted to show that it's not something created. It is literary scriptures, which has been transmitted for generations and generations and generations um, down this lineage that is Sanatana Hindu Dharma. And uh, it is not self-made something, self-proclaimed something. It's very much alive and it is the reality of uh, of Sanatana and Dharma and how you reach the ultimate. So Guru, Guru is very important. Yoga, most of the time we feel, oh, yoga is something you can do on your own to achieve on your own, right? Um, I've always felt, and I feel a lot of us do, feel that, you know, yoga is the path where you can do it, you can make it on your own. But here is very clear, Shiva is very clear that there's no such thing as making it on your own when doing yoga, because the Guru is the context from which yoga happens. So I think that's very powerful. It removes a lot of doubt that we have towards, you know, perhaps having vested interests of surrendering to the Guru. There's no such thing. If you want to have that, if you're seeking that fulfillment, that enlightenment, that spiritual blossoming, that bliss, eternal bliss experience, um, Guru is required. And without it, even in some of these slokas, I said, uh, it clearly says that without the Guru's instruction or grace, you can't, you can't make it. Um, and abusing Guru is even worse that uh, if I don't uh, go back to that 17th sloka, the verse in the third chapter, it's like those who are addicted to sensual pleasure, keep bad company, disbelievers, div disbelievers devoided of respect towards their Guru, resort to promiscuous assemblies, addicted to false and vain controversies, who are cruel in their speech and who do not give satisfaction to their guru never attain success. So that shows how um, when you start to rebel or to enter into conflict with guru, um, you lose everything because that's the context and that context is going, is responsible to bestow everything. If you lose the context, you lose everything. Uh, you might regain, you know, you might keep you might, it's like, you know, you do the yoga, you know how to do all the asanas, somehow you've trained your body to be flexible in a certain way, but that itself will not give the purpose of yoga. It will give maybe some form of benefits, but these benefits alone are not worth it. The fulfillment of experiencing the oneness, of experiencing the Guru's grace, um, that, is, that is worth it. Everything else is a side effect. It's great as long as you're on the path of seeking that fulfillment, that grace of the Guru, that oneness with Paramashiva. If you're on some other path and you get all the benefits of like health and powers and all that, what's the point? There, there really is no point. So that's my experience. And I wanted to share that with you guys. 
So Shastar Pramana is here. Um, I'll try to find, I'll find, I'll look for some of the things in other scriptures to kind of reinforce the importance and to give a more clear context because um, in a video, most likely tomorrow, we'll see. Uh, I want to talk also about like how to identify Hindus because I've had some comments of people saying that no, I'm Hindu and there's no such thing of needing guru in Hinduism. I mean, uh, no, <laughs> this is straight up Hinduism. It is one of the biggest scriptures of yoga in Hinduism and it is clearly stated that the guru is mandatory. So like that, you need to have this kind of awareness, knowledge to know how to distinguish somebody who is kind of experiencing his own thing and somebody who is experiencing Sanatana Hindu Dharma and what the actual science that Shiva revealed for enlightenment is. So I feel it's very important, very powerful. So share it with people, uh, let people know, you can watch, share that video or make them come, like, comment if you have any questions um, and then I'll see you guys in another video. Or oh, one thing also every night after satsang here because right now I'm in Canada, so it is night time, we have satsang. Well, we go live, we do a Varkyata Sadas, which is a spiritual exchange uh, to raise the co our understanding, our cognition about what is the truth, about what Swamiji is revealing in the satsang and to make it turn it into an experience. And uh, it happens, I'll put the channel below right now, it's happening on the Blissful Athletes channel, Dridananda. Uh, we've been doing it for the last two days, so it keeps, it's going to keep going on. So. Watch us and join us and, uh, and put your inputs and your comments there while we go live. It happens approximately at midnight EST time. Um, so I don't know where you are, but you can map it out with Google. You can check the, the, the difference in time and join us. So with this, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you very much uh, for your support, for your attention. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. I welcome you all with my love and respect. Let you all open all your three eyes. Ooh.